Hello all. In this lecture, I'll be discussing the basic definitions in automata theory. First, I'll start with basic definitions. First definition is whenever we start with a language, what is the first thing we start in English? We start with alphabets. So alphabet in formal automata, alphabet is denoted with sigma. Okay, sigma. So alphabet is a finite non-empty set of symbols. So in English, what are the alphabets we have? A, B, C, D and till Z. Similarly, here you can define any set of symbols as part of your alphabet. Let's take some example. So first example is, let us consider the binary alphabet. So here in the binary alphabet, you have only two symbols, 0 and 1. So I denote my binary alphabet as sigma is equal to 0, 1. Second example is set of all the uppercase English alphabets. So when we say uppercase English alphabets, my alphabet is now a set of A, B, C all in uppercase till capital Z. So as we complete learning this alphabet, next we start with sight words or words in English. So next comes of, if and all those sight words and then the actual vocabulary words. So here also we are going to start with words instead we call it strings so string over an alphabet so alphabet as i told we are denoting it with sigma and here in formal automata string is usually defined with lowercase w lowercase x lowercase y or lowercase z so these are the notations that we use for denoting a string in formal automata. So now string is a finite sequence of symbols that is retrieved from the English alphabets, sorry, alphabet, that alphabet set that we uh, create. So let us take an example. So now sigma is equal to 0, 1. So this is my binary alphabet. Now my alphabet has only two symbols 0 and 1. Consider I am going to make a string. So let me define it as W and then the string is made of combination of elements or symbols taken from that alphabet set. So consider W is equal to 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0. So this is an example of a string or you can also say X is equal to 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 1. So this is another string that is created from the alphabet sigma, which contains only two symbols, 0 and 1. Now, coming to empty string. If there is a string and it does not have any content, then you call it an empty string. It is denoted with lowercase e or epsilon. So empty string is a string with zero symbols. Next, length of a string. It is denoted by, if my string is W, then we denote it by modulus W. So consider W is equal to 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0. So the length of this string is going to be 7. Consider another alphabet, sorry, string 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 1. So the length of such a string is 8, right? Yeah. Now, what is the length of an empty string? Empty string has no symbols, so length of that string is 0. Next, we'll continue with 
power of alphabet. So power of an alphabet is denoted by sigma power k. So let us see what it is. So power of an alphabet is set of strings of length k chosen from sigma. So if I say sigma is equal to 0, 1. So my alphabet is having only two symbols, 0 and 1. Now, 0, sorry, um, sigma power 0 is empty, nothing. So I denote it by epsilon. Sigma power 1 is, I have elements that has length only 1. So 0 is an element, 1 is an element. Now, sigma power 2. So, all the strings of my set will be of length 2. So, this is 2. So, the length of my strings are 2. Similarly, sigma power 3. So, sigma power 3. So, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0 1, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1. This is comma. 1, 0, 0. 101, 110, 111. So all these strings are of the length k. This is the power of an alphabet. Next, when I say all strings, so I want to create a set of all strings over an alphabet sigma. So how do I represent it? Is sigma power star. So, sigma power star is sigma power 0, union sigma power 1, union sigma power 2 and so on till sigma power k. Now, coming to non-empty strings. Okay, so this is the representation. 0, 1, if this is the alphabet set, then if I want to include all possibilities, first comes epsilon so this is representing epsilon empty string this represents 0 and 1 sigma power 1 length of strings with only one element so 0 comma 1 so this uh, denotes sigma power 2 denotes all these strings with length 2 so all these are of length 2 and so on yeah, now set of non-empty strings. Non-empty strings is only the empty string is epsilon. So I should say the same set without epsilon. So how do I represent it? I represent it with sigma power plus. So which is the combination of sigma power 1, union sigma power 2, union sigma power 3 and so on. So now I can say that sigma power star is equal to sigma power plus union epsilon so this together you can see as sigma power star next concatenation of strings so concatenation of strings is not addition so whenever we talk about strings so let us take two examples so first one x is equal to 1010 y is equal to 0, 1, 1. So here, when I say I'm concatenating, what I do, I just write it as x, y or I can say that x dot y. So what will be the result is, I'm just going to put the first string first and second string second. So first is the placement of my first string, then the placement of the second string. So this is concatenation of x comma y. So next, let us try yx, which is y dot x, which is 0, 1, 1, 1. So placement of y and then x. So this is the concatenation of strings. Now, if w is a string and I want to concatenate it with an empty string denoted by epsilon here, which I can say is the same as concatenation of epsilon and the same string, which is equal to the representation of the string itself. 
So here epsilon is called as an identity element during concatenation. So here we can say concatenation is a binary operation on strings because it involves two operands. Language over alphabet sigma. So when we say alphabet, then strings, so it leads to creation of, an, of a language. So a set of strings that is chosen from sigma star, which is all possibilities that is created from this alphabet is the language. So let us take some examples. Language of all strings consists of n zeros followed by n ones for some n greater than or equal to zero. So now it is equal to 0 also and greater than 0 also. So we will be starting with n is equal to 0. So we are going to look for all strings consisting of n number of zeros. So 0 number of zeros and 0 number of ones first, which is epsilon. Then you keep incrementing uh, n's value from 0. So next n's value will be 1. So n sorry 1 0 followed by 1 1 so this is the second item next increment n is equal to 2 so 2 zeros followed by 2 1 so 2 zeros followed by 2 1 then 3 zeros followed by 3 1 and so on so this is the creation of language over alphabet sigma so this is the first example Second example, set of strings of zeros and ones with equal number of each. So when we say equal number of each, what happens? First, consider there is nothing, zero zeros, zero ones. So obviously the first element is going to be epsilon. Next, I can have zero and one. Number should be equal, count should be equal, but it can be in any order. So I can say 0, 1 is the first uh, next item. I can also say 1, 0 is the another element or string. Now, next, let me consider two zeros and two ones. So two zeros and two ones. I can put it in some other order also. Okay, I can put it in some other order and so on. Furthermore, it is going to be three zeros and three ones. So in this case, you can see that we can only have even number of elements in the string. So these are some inference that we have to make from these kind of rules from which we are going to create the language. So another example, set of binary numbers whose value is prime. So we know binary numbers are combinations of zeros and ones. So let us start from um, two. So two we represent it with one comma zero, three, then we have five, then we have seven and so on. So all these are set of binary numbers whose value is prime. Then finally, coming to empty language. So when you have empty set of strings or something which has no strings, then you call it an empty language. And we have the notation phi representing an empty language. Thank you.